see if I'm actually live. Sometimes there's a bit of a delay. I think there is one. This dashboard's not showing anything. There is sound, okay. We're doing this micless. Um, if you caught the Fountain Pen Live, about halfway through, sound stops. And that's because my microphone died, even though it was fully charged. And so I've ordered a new microphone. It is actually out for delivery, but it has not arrived yet. And so I can't film anything I was supposed to film today. And so instead we're doing another episode of filming Dot Cards Live because I can do that micless, I think. <laughs> so this is the Daniel Smith 66 Colors to Try sheet. I don't know if this is still the same as the current one, I actually can't even find this one on Jackson's. They use it in a promo pick, but they don't actually have it available. My local art store still have it though. And a few years ago, this was actually a special where if you bought a certain amount of paint from any brand, you got this for free. And so we have like two or three of them kicking around the studio. So I decided it was finally time to swatch them out and see how many of these colors are actually in my palette. I think there's a lot of them that are, but we're going to do it slightly different and I'm going to start with this middle section, which is quinacridones and more because I know that some of these are sparkly and I can never remember which ones are and which ones aren't. And so I'm just going to swatch them all with my glitter brush. And then I know that these all need to be swatched on black because Interference colors really don't show up on white. They only show up on black. And the pearlescent shimmer, like, doesn't work. Oh, this paper is unsized. Oh, Daniel Smith, come on. You're telling, you're telling me I have to go and find paper. Do I want to go find paper? The answer is no. Nope, we're not going to. We are going to swatch it out on the page because I find that really silly. I do have paper next to me. No, we're swatching them out on the page. <laughs> we're doing the same thing we did for the uh, schminkes, which come on paper you can swatch on, which is logical. Um, because you're not going to get all of this pigment off this paper. These are really small dots, uh, and they're really flat. They look pretty big. They're actually pretty much entirely flat. So Quinn Burnt Orange is up first. They don't even put the pigment numbers. Okay, this might be the least helpful dot card from any brand. Quinn Burnt Orange is P048. Question mark. I believe. Um, I've got it in my palette. I think it's P048. Uh, but I might be wrong. Yeah, because Quinn Gold is P049. Quinn Burnt Scarlet is... PR206 question mark maybe um I think oh let's look Quinn Burnt Scarlet I will say that I am not impressed pigment chart PDF Jay signed out. Does this actually have pigment numbers? If not, you are useless to me. It does, but they're all separated, so here we go. <laughs> Quinn. 
Yep, that is correct. Now what are we looking for? Quinn Brent's foot. I was correct. It's PR206. Quinn Gold Deep is PY150 and PO48. I have it in my palette. Quinacridone Coral is... Okay, you know what? I'm just going to leave all the pigment info below. <laughs> we we will leave pigment info in the description because I apparently cannot swatch live and figure out pigment numbers. Um, I think it is useless that a dot card does not contain pigment numbers. I have Quinn Coral in my palette. Oh, I should know what the pigment number is. I honestly can't think of what it is. Having a dog card that has no pigment numbers is useless. Uh, but I feel that way about some of the other Daniel Smith stuff. Like, it's not easy to find their pigment numbers in their, some of their color charts. Quinacridone fuchsia, lovely color. Not super different than um, quinacridone magenta. Quinacridone gold. I wish they had quinacridone gold and quinacridone gold, deep gold next to each other. Um, I think as an artist, like being able to see them side by side is important, but you know, Daniel Smith does its own thing. Quinn Magenta. I have gone through an entire tube of this. I love this color. It's great. Not super different than Quinacridone Fuchsia. Or maybe Quinacridone Fuchsia is more similar to my inviolate, actually. We have quinacridone pink, which I don't have in my palette, but I keep thinking about adding. It is very pretty. Quinacridone red. I don't have the Daniel Smith version. I have somebody else's. Oh, no, I do have the Daniel Smith version. I have it in a quarter. Or do I have quinacridone rose? They're both the same pigment, I think. Normally they are. They're normally both PV19s. I assume that that's the same in this brand, but honestly, who knows? Yeah, they're both PV19s based off of looks. I would say they're both PV19s. Am I correct? I love how I said I wasn't going to look at pigment numbers anymore. And now I'm going to go and find out if I'm right or not. Uh, quinacridone pink and quinac... Oh, no, quinacridone... No, quinacridone pink, quinacridone rose, that's quin red. Yep, same pigment number. And quinacridone pink is PV42. I don't know that I've got a PV42 in my palette. Um, yeah, no, I don't. It's a fun color. It's a nice bright pink. How light fast is it? Uh, it's got, oh, it's got, it's two. It's very good. Um, so, yeah, I like it. I might be added to my palette. I do really love quinacridone coral. I've been, I've gone through an entire tube of it. Quinacridone sienna, oh, lovely. I don't tend to like oranges, but there's something about it. Quinacridone Violet. I have a tube of this, and I know that I don't like it. It's just sort of the wrong purple for me. Quin Purple. Again, not, not my favorite purple. If you've been around for a while, you'll know that I don't tend to like premix or single pigment purples. I tend to like mixed purples that have like dimension. So it's not a surprise that I don't like it. Oh, coffee. Quinacridone lilac. I've looked at it. I've never got it. I think this is another PV19. Let's find out. Quinacridone lilac. I 
very much just like the Daniel Smith site. Oh no, it's, oh, it's PR122. Yeah, no surprise though, I like it. It's my favorite version of quinacridone uh, magenta. Depending on the brand, PR122 is quinacridone magenta or um, quinacridone lilac. Cascade Green. Weird mix. I've never been able to mix this color with the pigment numbers listed myself, but it is a super fun color and one of my favorite greens. I have gone through a five millimeter tube and a half of another one and I've, I think I finally purchased a 15 mil of it. Imperial Purple is on my list of colors to add to my palette, so it'll be interesting to see if I actually like it. Reminds me of a 31 Purple Fish color, uh, but I can't think of which one. It is fun, like it's got some dimension to it. Wisteria. I don't have the watercolor version of this, but I have the gouache version, so I know I like it. I like the gouache version more. <laughs> no surprise there. Um, that I already have a preferred version. Burnt Sienna Light. I don't know that I've got a burnt sienna light in my palette. I like quinacridone sienna more. I think quinacridone sienna, depending on what they discontinue for in like the other quin pigments, you could probably mix some things similar to a quin gold with it. Lavender. Looked at it, but I've got enough colors similar to it in my palette that I don't use enough to justify having it, so I have not purchased it for my palette. Aussie Red Gold, something that I have looked at purchasing. It's not easy to get. Oh, it's fun though. I do like it. Uh, yeah, I definitely like it. Payne's Blue Gray is very blue, I think. I don't know. I don't tend to like Payne's Grays. They're, like, not my favorite. And I especially don't like the ones that are really blue undertones. Like, I like the more neutrally ones. Yeah, I don't love it, honestly. Uh, Raw Sienna Light. Sure. As long as it's a single pigment, it's a pretty great raw sienna. Uh, but if it's a mix like we ran into with the Schmincke raw sienna, um, then no. Rose Matter Permanent. Oh, I do like you. Hmm. Okay. I'm not against. Lunar Black. Have it. No, I love it. I'm going to need another tube of it at some point. It is my favorite black for granulating mixes, so no surprise that I like it. Now, we are going to put away my Tintrata brush because I'm going to mix out all of the Primatech colors with a metallic brush simply because I can't remember which ones are super shimmery and which ones aren't. Actually, the ones that I know aren't shimmery, we're going to do with a cheap brush, not a Tintoretto. Uh, so, Blue Appetite Genuine gets to get mixed out. Actually, if I Google, somebody can probably tell me which colors are shimmery and which ones aren't. Green Tintoretto. They're not shimmery. Uh, Mayan blue isn't shimmery. So these I have in my palette. Anything that I'm swatching out right now exists in my palette. I like the Mayan blue genuine. There are handmade versions I prefer, but they're not currently available. So I would say that the Daniel Smith one's actually a fairly good option. 
It is pricey though. I do also like blue appetite. Like it's a nicely moody blue gray. Uh, which Uh, Hematite Violet is in my palette. This brush definitely doesn't work as nicely as my Tintoretto does. Um, I, will I will just clean my Tintoretto. Um, after this. There. How much water synthetic squirrel holds. We have Pymonite, which is also in my palette. It's a very pretty dark red. We have... That's Barkley, that's Barkley. We have Hematite Genuine. Oh, do I have hematite or hematite violet? I think I've just got hematite. They've got a tr they've got a six mixing set, or they used to. So I have whatever came in that six set. Because at some point in 2021, it was on clearance at Michael's. Black tourmaline genuine. That's another one. Uh, I love this color. I have a half pan of it actually in my studio palette. Hair glitter, hair glitter. You are not glittery. I have many. I have a, I have like two tubes of this. Only because I got it for a crazy price. I think a 15 mil tube was like $5 Canadian at Michael's when I got it. And so I got two tubes. Did I need two tubes? No. Did I know that I didn't like it? No. Um, my other colors are sparkly. So fuchsia Apparently you're not sparkly. Oh, you're pretty. Oh, that's pretty. It's so delight. Then we have Green Appetite. It's also very pretty. Fuchsite, bronzite, br bronzite. Oh, Lapis Lazuli. Uh, which I don't have in my palette from any brand, mostly due to cost, a little bit because like I've got so many other blues, I don't see the point. It's not that different from a ultramarine blue, so I don't actually see the point in having it on my palette. Looks like you are safe to swatch. This is Bloodstone. I 
I wish they marked which ones were sparkle instead of having to go off of people's um, like notes. is I want to say jadeite and jet granite aren't and we're going to assume that everything else is sparkly there's garnet there's jadeite Serpentine, and then I think everything else is sparkly. Oh, I do like serpentine. It's fun. You're on the list. 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 These two aren't on the list. Okay. Let's hope this person's notes are correct on what's sparkly and what isn't. Yeah, they're not sparkly. I need to try to brush how to line my eye. Everything else from this point on is sparkly. So let's switch water cups so that I don't contaminate literally everything with glitter and keep going. We have Amethyst. Which I know I at least sort of like. It's in my palette. We have Bronzite. Never tried. This brush holds so much water for a cheap dollar store brush. Most of my shimmer brushes are just cheap dollar store brushes. Um, you can actually find some that work pretty well. Fuchsite Genuine is in my palette. I don't love it. It's been in my palette for a long time and it's just not my favorite. I have other metallics that I like far more. I guess I should probably also swatch out these six on other paper. Cryonite. I desperately wanted to love this color and I think I would if it was actually matte. Red Fuchsite. Sergalite. So here's our black paper. And we have Amethyst. Fuchsite. Cry 
right. Red fuchsia. And sweet. So as you can see, like amethyst has no color on black, but the others definitely show up. Let's get into the final section, which is the luminescent colors. So personally, I don't think that any of them are going to look good on this paper because all of them lend themselves to black paper, but we're going to try. We're going to see how they look and then we're going to swatch them all on black. I've done other like big brand shimmers before and so I know that they're not normally my favorite because of how fantastic handmade shimmers are. They just don't have the same like shimmer proportions that handmade paints do and because of that they just don't really live up to everything. Okay, so I'm gonna give these their best shot and pre-wet them all. Because that's a really sad goal if that's as good as it gets. Give them a second, because that's as good as it gets for this gold. <laughs> Daniel Smith, you can do better. Okay, color-wise, that's not awful. I like how bright it is, but the shimmer ratio is not, is not it. Interference colors don't show up on white. The fact that they don't say that anywhere on this sheet, I think sort of sucks because they just don't show up on white. They only show up on white if you've layered them over another paint. And even then, like, they'll only show up on certain angles, which as a consumer would make it really annoying 
if you swatched out this dog card and we're going like these colors aren't showing up. I only know that they don't show up on white because I have dozens of them in my palettes from a variety of small shops. And yeah, like they're just, I don't know. I feel like they can do better than what I'm seeing here. And maybe they are better fresh from the tube, but like don't include them on your dark card then. Cactus flower. Do a viscous. I bet you I know exactly what pigment this is. I'm so sure that I know what this is, what this is. I'm sort of I've got an idea of what the duochrome blue and the green are. There are only so many pigments out there for shimmers. Uh, there are only so many pigment dealers out there. And so the more handmade shops you deal with and the more pigment suppliers you get introduced to through those handmade shops. If I was a consumer that had purchased this stock card full price, I don't know that I'd consider adding Daniel Smith paints to my palette. And if this was my first introduction to shimmer paints, I would be so disappointed. Um, so let's swatch these out on black. Let's see if they can redeem themselves at all. I have my doubts, but let's see. the gold. This is the iridescent jade. Here's the iridescent sunstone. Iridescent ruby. Iridescent electric blue. I would say so far the electric blue is the one I like the most. Iridescent sapphire. blue, iridescent, sapphire. Okay, 
out of those ones so far, the only one I like is Electric Blue, and even then, I'm not convinced about the formulation. With metallics, they need to be super smooth, activating from the pan, because especially if they're going down on black paper, you get all these streaky lines that you sort of have here and here and here and here. If the formula isn't smooth because they're going down on black paper, like it's really, really noticeable if stuff is sort of clumping together at all. And I'm not convinced that this is the right formula for metallic paints. Yeah. I think, I think they could have done better. Actually, I'm confident they could have done better and I'm not super impressed so far. So this is the Interference Blue, which doesn't show up on white at all and is, I think, presented in the wrong way on the dark card because nowhere on the dark card do they say, hey, when you swatch this on the dark card, it won't show up. You need to swatch it on a dark paper. Um, I just happen to know that this is Interference Copper. This is one of my favorite Interference paints from small shops. Um, it was one of my first handmade watercolor paints was uh, Ghost Copper from Cosmic Creations. And I love sort of the Interference Copper. I think it brings like a lot of moodiness to paintings. Interference green, I suspect that this is pretty much the same as every other like ghost green on the market. Yeah, you can pretty much pick this up from any small shop that makes ghost colors or interference or like, I think, what does Iuli call them? Are they her fairy colors? I think. Um, Yeah. Interference Lilac. Okay, this one's actually pretty. I can only think of one or two brands that I've seen use this purple ghost pigment. It's not as commonly seen compared to the blue, the copper, and the green. You just don't see the pink as often. Um, the red, on the other hand, that I'm about to swatch, you do see pretty often. But it's still a formula thing. I'd say their formula works better with the interference colors than it does with the iridescent colors. The particle size for ghost colors is significantly smaller normally. And so that makes sense. Here's red. Then we have duochrome emerald. see any shift. We have Duo Sago Green, which looks absolutely horrific on white. finish swatching I will show what it looks like on white really it just it's something that most shops would not sell because it uh, just looks like brown spots on white paper um, duo cactus flower Oh yeah, I know what that is. Um, I know who one of the pigment dealers is for it. Duo Hibiscus. Oh, same. I was right.
duochrome Cabo Blue. I think I know what this is. Yeah. So there are lots of metallics that when you swatch them on black will just look gold or silver. This one is one where it just looks gold. Is there a problem with that? No. Is it my favorite look? Also, no. I've stopped adding colors like that to my palette. This is pearlescent shimmer. This is actually a color that I would maybe consider adding if it was a formula that I actually enjoyed using because it's got like a nice snow effect and I think it would look really cool for glazing over a piece. That being said, I don't like the formula formulation of the Daniel Smith ones. So I think I just hope that a small shop that I like got a similar pigment. Pearlescent white is our final one and then we'll go through and we will label everything that we just swatched. Yep, there is a difference between the pearlescent shimmer and the pearlescent white. All right, so it's blue. Copper. There we go. There are all of the various metallics. There isn't really a shift on the duos. There might be a tiny one, but the interference on the other hand are actually sort of pretty. Um, I would say they're the nicest colors in this entire set. Whereas like the others are not as nice. The, just the formulation is off um, and I can't put my finger on what the actual issue is with the formula but something isn't right so let's go through this sheet and figure out what I'd actually add to my palette so I'm going to go through this but I also don't totally remember what's actually in my palette. Um, I like this. I have, I don't have, I don't have. I think of the Primatech colors, Sodalite Genuine might be the only one I want to add. Actually, Green Appetite as well. I like it. So I've got hematite. Oh, we forgot to swatch one. Use a matte brush. Pipe stone genuine. Mm, don't love. 
this is sort of interesting. But really, I think sodalite, green appetite, and maybe serpentine? Let's mark serpentine as a maybe. And then let's go down here into quinacridones and others. My hand is now covered in glitter. That's fairly normal. I like quinacridone pink. I have, I don't have, but I don't love. I have, I have. I don't have, I have, I have, I have, I have one of them. I do like Quinciana. I do actually like Imperial Purple. I have Cascade Green. I have Quin Lilac, but just not from this brand. I do like Permanent Magenta. Do I need Aussie Red Gold? Maybe. Um, more glitter on my hand. And then we get down to the shimmers. I like you can see that like like this one is the only one I could consider using on white, and maybe this the cabo blue. These would work okay for glazing, but not by themselves. And these just don't show up at all on white. Um, and so there should have been a note that they had to be used on black. This is the one that I question why it exists. Yes, it is pretty-ish on black but I would say that it doesn't have sort of the duochrome effect that you get with handmade paints and so to be calling it a duo paint is um interesting and also on white paper it looks like this so that's you know a choice um I can think of some handmade paints that look like that, but they're not marketed towards being used on white paper. They're sold as only to be used on black paper. So like take that as what you will. I will say though that the pearl shimmer, I'm not totally against. I don't love the formulation, but I do like the sort of like snowy effect so it is actually going to get a dot um because you never know what you might find in clearance so there we go that is the daniel smith extra fine 66 colors to try dot card this is an older one i don't know if they updated it at some point but it is definitely an interesting card to look at I will say there are definitely some things that I do prefer about the Schmincke cards. The fact that they use pre-sized paper um, and the fact that they include pigment numbers. Having a dot card that doesn't actually include pigment information to me just seems a bit absurd. Uh, it sort of seems like an essential thing to be on a dot card. So, yeah, let me know what you think. Would you buy a dot card that didn't actually include the pigment information? Because it definitely has me considering or reconsidering getting any more dot products from Daniel Smith. Because not including the pigment information makes everything so much harder. Let me know below. Uh, if you liked this video, please like and subscribe. It really does help. And as always, thanks for watching.